Fire Department, and we are going to be taking a look at arson investigation and fire science. Take a look. Hey, David Jobs here, Fire Marshal from the City of Nicholasville. I'm a fire investigator and a fire marshal, and uh, basically what I do is I oversee fire prevention, code enforcement related to fire codes, and I do fire investigations for the City of Nicholasville and anyone else who uh, needs a fire investigation done uh, through mutual aid. So, here at the city, uh, we investigate every fire that comes through and we take a look at what has happened and we determine cause and origin. Hey, so fire investigations, a real important part of uh, daily life for firefighters and for the community because it provides uh, safety for the community by investigating properly. So when we have a fire, uh, that's going to be investigated. The firefighters are going to notice things that have happened in a fire and all fires have to be investigated anyways. So, but they're going to notice patterns and the way fire behaves uh, is, is quite common. There's a lot of uh, scientific development in that and the science has changed greatly on what happens in regards to fire. But we're going to start to see effects like these patterns on the wall because generally fire wants to always try to go up and then inside a house or a, a commercial building or any kind of place where there is a fire uh, you're going to have a compartment so it's going to be compartmentalized and those fire effects are going to be uh, changed by the, the space and the contents of the space uh, giving off heat uh, radiating temperatures or convecting temperatures are all going to be things that we're going to look at in a fire for instance here you see some you see some material that's burned and there's what we call charring. And when you're investigating a fire, they're, they're, these are the things that need to be looked at to see where the fire spread, how it developed, what behaved in the fire that we need to focus on, or how broad of a scope do we need to get to before we focus. And when you're doing a fire investigation, you start from the outside, you take a look at what's happened outside. What can we see visually on the outside of a building that's happened first. Where did the fire try to go? Because uh, usually, unless it's completely trapped, a fire is going to produce enough heat to escape a building with either smoke damage, which is another thing we're looking at in a fire, or it's going to escape with heat and thermal damage, where it breaks out a window and then puts heat and thermal damage out due to ventilation. So there's a lot of things to learn about fire investigation. It is, it's a process that you go through, learning a lot of science, and developing hypothesis and then with a group of people the one thing that's really great about fire investigations is it, it's a lot of teamwork you might be starting out doing it on your own but a lot of times you're going to be going in with other fire investigators or an insurance investigator and looking at it together and developing what we call consensus so what's the consensus on this fire did it start here in this origin so like here if we're actually looking at this building which in this case we know fires have been started here, but we're gonna see an origin area, or we may see multiple origin areas. And so in fire investigations, you're gonna get into both. Are we investigating a fire that could be arson and have arson related charges, or are we investigating a fire that is accidental in nature, or are we investigating a fire that's undetermined? We, we cannot even through uh, all of our investigation determine what's happened. And then the part of the fire investigation that gets goes beyond us is when we bring engineers in and they may look at what happened here electrically and maybe they find an electrical failure. So the teamwork concept on fire investigation is key because we're always working together with other individuals, uh, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, other fire investigators, people that have seen uh, failures of components over time and we also research this on the internet so uh, the one thing that's good about our world now and I started out way back when that was not available is now we can go and we can research what where, where are kitchen fires happening what typically happens with a kitchen fire what does the damage look like and we can compare that to the fire that we're investigating and see if anything matches up that can help us with our focus so that we can determine a cause and an origin because to go all the way back those are the two things that we're looking to do in a fire investigation is what caused this fire and where did it originate or where did it multiply originate if somebody uh, 
uh, set that fire and set it in different spots and use flammable liquids. Uh, we might have multiple origins, but generally we're going to be looking at a single origin and then the fire spread to somewhere else due to the fire behavior, convection, conduction, radiation, all the, all the types of heat movement, thermometry, a lot of science. So uh, in fire investigation, we're looking at a lot of science and we're looking at a lot, doing a lot of research and developing consensus about what has happened at a fire. And we might develop two or three things. We might just develop uh, one thing, but we're generally gonna start out broad with what we think. And then we're gonna take that hypothesis using the uh, scientific method. And we're gonna, we're gonna try to test it and observe enough things so that when we're testing it, we can figure out which one's most likely because on a lot of fires, we're gonna come up with a most likely scenario uh, that, that all the odds for other, other reasons for this fire have been kind of ruled out due to damage uh, in a variety of ways. And then we're gonna, we're gonna narrow our scope because we have to account in a fire investigation for everything to begin with. And then we start to develop some consensus about what's happened here with this fire. Like in this fire, we know that, that wood was definitely involved because we have wood here. We, we've got charred wood. So we know it was probably right in this corner here where this fire started. And in the case of this, uh, we can't ignore the obvious. So that develops a, a hypothesis for us. And we develop and, and build on that hypothesis looking at the evidence. Does the evidence continue to back up the hypothesis? or does the evidence take us away from our hypothesis? And then we maybe go to the second one or the third one or the fourth one. Uh, many fires that, that have been determined, like a recent fire here in this county uh, was started by hot coals from a fireplace being brought out onto the deck on the, on the back porch and set by a set of steps. And then those steps caught on fire and then the deck caught on fire and then it, it moved into the building. And all of the fire behavior and damage within that building pointed back to where that origin was. Um, and then one, one thing I haven't talked about there is uh, the other thing we're doing when we're starting that broad scope is we're talking to everybody who may have knowledge about the fire. So we're gonna interview folks and talk to them. And maybe we even have to involve law enforcement to, to interview some folks if we have something where there's gonna be criminal charges. And we get them talking about what happened at the fire and we see if that story matches up. We see if everybody's saying the same thing. There was a lot of flames coming out of this window. There was, or you know, somebody else says, well, there was only smoke. And then we, we talk through those stories many times and I can think of, uh, you know, over the years investigating so many fires, there's been times when people remembered stuff later. So you might even interview them a second time. And you might also interview them a second time just to see if that story stays the same. Does, is it still matching up? Or have they changed what they think happened? Uh, are, there, are they saying something totally different now? Well, actually, it was my brother. And, and they started out saying it was them. And then they got, they got concerned. So there's, it's a broad field of experience and knowledge that you need to gain. But uh, in the United States and, and pretty much any, any country, but in the United States, there are a lot of training resource available for fire investigations where people can learn as much as they will need to learn to investigate fires well. Because the bottom line is the, the fire uh, knowledge goes in a cycle. There, there's years where there will be a lot of fires, and there's years where there will not be as many fires. And so some fire investigators come in and don't get to experience a lot of fires right off the bat. So that's why we got to gain as much knowledge as we can, especially from those people that have been at fires and from the science that's out there now so that we can come up with good information uh, that we're given to people. All right, so uh, fire investigators also uh, investigate car fires and RV fires and uh, trailer fires and all kinds of uh, any, any kind of fire is going to be investigated by a fire investigator unless uh, the people there already know what has happened and the crews that are on scene determine that that's uh, they're going to be able to collect enough evidence and or determine the cause and origin because that has to happen at each fire that's the responsibility 
of, of the fire investigators. Thank you for tuning in from the STEM with Chantel. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share this video so you can be aware of the next time we upload. Thank you.